Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll explain how easy it is to add the Syncfusion Blazor Range Slider component to a Blazor WebAssembly application. Here, the range slider is used to calculate cloud costs based on the number of workloads, the complexity of workloads, system requirements, and monitoring requirements that are used in a cloud operation. In this demo, the slider is used for selecting processor, memory, and storage values. We will see how to configure the range slider component with a few of its basic features like binding values, applying ranges, types, tooltips, customization, ticks, formats, and limits. We will also see how to customize the range slider using CSS classes. Let me start with the application creation process. A Blazor application can be created using Visual Studio 2019 or 2022, Visual Studio Code or JetBrains Writer. In this video, I'll show you how to create a Blazor WebAssembly application using Visual Studio 2022. Make sure that you have installed a compatible SDK version like .NET Core SDK 3.1.8, .NET 5.0 SDK, or .NET 6.0 SDK. First, open Visual Studio 2022 and choose Create a new project from the dashboard. Then, choose the Blazor WebAssembly app and click Next. Name your project and click Next. Then, select .NET 6.0 as the target framework and click Create. A project has been created and is ready to use. Now I will show you the step-by-step -step process for adding the range slider component to this project. First, we need to install the range slider package. Open the NuGet package manager, search for the Syncfusion Blazor inputs package, and install it in your application. Once installed, you can see the package added to this application's packages folder. Then, navigate to the imports.razor page and import the Syncfusion Blazor inputs namespace. Next, we need to register the Syncfusion Blazor services. In the program.cs file, import the Syncfusion.blazor namespace and register the Syncfusion Blazor service using the at Syncfusion Blazor method. Set the ignore script isolation option to true to improve application performance by referencing the script externally. We also need to register the license with a valid key using the register license method to avoid the license validation message. Next, navigate to the index.html page within the root folder and include the script reference since we enabled the ignore script isolation option. Then add a Syncfusion Bootstrap 5 CSS reference from the installed package. If you want to know more about the Blazor WebAssembly app and how to add Syncfusion components to it, you can check out the video linked in the card above. The configuration steps are done, so let's move on to adding the Blazor range slider component to the index.razor page. Include the SF slider tag. To render the slider, I need to denote a current value for the slider using the value property. I set its value to 30. Let me run this application and check the default layout of the range slider. In the output, the range slider is rendered and you can choose any desired value. The current value of the slider is 30 units. This is the default slider for selecting a single value. The other slider types are min range and range. To render a min range slider, include the type property and set the slider type to min range. Checking the app now, the slider displays a shadow from the start value to the current selected value. To select a range of values in the slider, change the slider type to range and need to provide an array of numbers to the value property. In at code directive, declare a variable range value of type integer array and assign the values. Assign this variable to the value property. Checking now, the specified range is selected in the slider. Next, I'll show you how to display a tooltip in the slider. Include the slider tooltip tag and enable the is visible property. Now a tooltip is shown when the thumb is clicked. Tooltip is also shown while dragging. 
To always show the tooltip, include the show on property and set its value to always. See now, the tooltip is shown when clicking it and remains visible until new action performed on the slider. Notice, tooltip is shown above the thumb. To customize the tooltip position, I include the placement property and set its value to after. Now the tooltip is displayed below the thumb. I can also increase or decrease the slider value using button. Enable show buttons property in the slider. See here, slider has buttons and I can increase or decrease the values. As you can see, it's hard to see where exactly the values are on the slider. To make the values more accessible, I'll add ticks to the slider. Slider ticks offer small steps and large steps. Here I include the slider ticks tag and set the small step property to 10 units and the large step property to 20 units. I will also set the placement property to after to denote the position of the ticks in the slider. Then enable the show small ticks property to show the minor ticks. Look at the slider rendered with ticks. The large step ticks are spaced at a distance of 20 units. These small steps are spaced at a distance of 10. By default, only the value of major ticks will be displayed. Next, I will show you how to customize the units of the slider to any format. To demonstrate the visualization of ticks in kilometers, I include the format property and set its value to display kilometers. See now, the ticks are displayed in kilometers. We can restrict dragging a thumb to a certain range. There are six built-in options available, enabled, min start, min end, max start, max end, start handle fixed, and end handle fixed. Here I will explain a few of the options and share a UG link to the others in the description below. We need to enable the limits by including the slider limits tag and setting the enabled property value to true. Include the min start property to set the minimum limit of the first handle and set its value to 10. Include the min end property to set the maximum limit of the first handle and set its value to 30. In the same way, set the min and max limit of the second handle using max start and max end properties. Checking the slider now, I can drag the thumb between 10 and 30 units in the first handle and between 40 and 60 units in the second handle. Next, I'll show you how to customize the slider. Here I can override the styles using the control CSS structure based on the user preferences. To customize the slider handle, use these CSS classes and add the custom background color and border. Check now handle is customized. Refer to the website linked in the card above to customize the track, limits, ticks, and buttons. In this video, I have shown you how to create a Blazor Web Assembly application, add a range slider component to it, and configure a few of its basic features. You can download this working example from the GitHub link in the description below. I've also shared a link where you can see about obtaining a free license key to use our Blazor products if you're eligible for our community license. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel.